that's less than eight minutes. That's about seven thirty or in seven forty. Is that okay? Fine. Yeah. Next. Next. We called the CD autobiography because jazz is a an interpretive art with improvisation, and I think that all the music that we play is somewhat autobiographical. It's the sum total of everything we've seen or heard or felt, and uh, there's a lot of history with the musicians on this date. Um, Jed Levy and I go back to Jack McDuff's band in 1983. George Cables and I have worked together on and off over the years, and it's, he's someone I've been listening to for a long time. I first heard him when he was in Joe Henderson's band in the, I guess, the late 1960s. Steve Johns, the drummer, is um, someone that I met and worked with when I first moved to New York over 20 years ago. And oh, Dwayne Burno is the youngest person in the group, and I've only known him for a few years. I've really come to appreciate and love his bass playing. Uh, we only had one rehearsal with the whole band. <laughs> different musicians in duet at Walker's and we ran over the material with Jed and Dwayne. California a couple of days before the recording date and uh, we were able to have this one rehearsal with the whole band and we did the whole CD in one day. We did a mix of uh, original compositions and uh, other people's compositions, material from within the jazz tradition. Uh, there's a TV theme, Mr. Lucky which is uh, from an old TV show that I used to watch, I think it's from the early 60s. And a Charlie Parker composition segment, which has uh, not been played that much. And a standard show tune, the East of the Sun, it's a solo guitar piece. And we took a composition by Albert Eiler called Ghosts and recorded it as a calypso, which I thought came off pretty well. My own approach to composition is to uh, pretty much give the musicians a minimum of information, maybe a melody line, a set of chord changes, a harmonic structure, a few rhythmic cues here and there, but uh, pretty much let the musicians participate in the composition rather than just reading a part. And um, a lot of jazz composers actually write for specific musicians, and uh, I definitely had these specific musicians in mind when I, I put together the music for the for the date. Well, you know, instead it's I, I sort of it's turning kind of gray, cool. I think it's kind which of cool. is fine. Yeah. I'm I just yeah. wanted to know. How you yeah, no, okay. I think that, that's okay. I was just saying, like, like the way we're dealing with the form, you know, the, it's opening up, which is cool if that's what he's looking. You know, I just want to make yeah. sure that's what he's looking for. Because the other conception would be to play like a lot of I mean, I don't, swing, want, real, I don't want, it, I don't want them to be completely indistinguishable, no, okay. but it's cool the way it is. Yeah, yeah great, I'm, okay, you know, I'm down with yeah. it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 great. you don't have to, just, just the way you played it. Yeah. But, you know. When we had talked about, the, you know, when we kind of just went over it, he was like, yeah, it's really, it's this, it's this. Even when we played it over at Peter's house, the three of us, yeah, but I mean, uh, with the rhythm section, it's, it could go. Totally. Could go I'm, I'm, I'm with you, man. Whatever you all do is fine. I, I mean, I was really just saying that for the sake of okay. rehearsal. Cool. You know. There's an element, I think, of film noir to this, this project, just because of the TV theme, Mr. Lucky, and there's a piece called Femme Fatale, which is kind of a dedication to all the heroines of, of film noir, uh, Kathy Moffat in Out of the Past, and people like that. 
And it's also about several real life women that I've known over the years. So um, I think being a jazz musician, I've lived a good portion of my life at night, which has given me a certain visual perspective. And for the last eight or 10 years, I've been uh, studying and practicing black and white photography, which has kind of helped me to balance out the eye and the ear. I think the, you know, the eye needed to focus a little more than it had been. So uh, this is something I've been working on. dark areas, the shadow area, what we call the shadow areas of a print, the dark areas correspond to the bass in the audio spectrum. And the highlights, the bright white areas, correspond to the treble. And you've got all the grays, different shades of grays in between, which um, correspond to like all the mid-range areas in the audio spectrum. And you can think of the lines and angles as corresponding to the rhythm of music. So you've got all these parallels. Music as well as in photography, I've never been interested in being an innovator or being on the cutting edge. I would just rather you know, produce some good music that has some personality in it of my own, bringing something of my own to the tradition, and just trying to create good music or trying to create a pleasing photograph, an interesting photograph. Mm -hmm. 